Hey, this is Aaron Dablo, and I'm going to cover a uh, technique in 3D Studio Max uh, for transferring animation uh, between rigs. So this technique is useful for a character TD uh, in, a, in a pipeline where you need to be able to move animation um, around on uh, character rigs. Uh, for example, uh, moving animation from one character that is already animated to another character with the same rig or similar control structure. Um, you can move animation from one scene file to a different scene file. Um, this allows you to have a, a simultaneous uh, character pipeline where you can have animators working on uncompleted uh, characters, the, where, the, where the base rig is already done, of course, but then you can have other people working on shaders, materials, textures, that sort of thing. Uh, you can have riggers working on a higher res version of the model, um, as well as uh, more detailed things that the animators don't need running in their scenes, like muscle systems or animated displacements or um, any of these types of more advanced things. Um, you can have uh, people setting up cloth, doing uh, preparing simulation of that sort. Uh, so it lets you really let uh, you know get the animators as much time as they need to work on their scenes and really let everybody work on as many different things as possible and then uh, be able to pull that all together towards the end. And it also lets you propagate versions of animation across uh, your entire pipeline and everybody's scenes very easily. So let's say, for example, uh, the animation changes on a character, you can uh, easily send that animation to somebody who's doing an effect scene where it's interacting with cloth or smoke or something like that, uh, and they can just update uh, update their their character rig uh, and not have to reset up any of their any any of their business. Um, so it's a useful uh, for keeping everybody working, uh, utilizing your short amount of time for as much as you have, or being able to easily duplicate animation from one character to another. So I'm going to show this on a simple character in a very simple scene, very controlled situation, moving animation from an animation file. Onto a layout, into a layout scene, which has lighting and shaders and all of that kind of stuff uh, going on. Uh, it's a very simple example, but it's a very powerful tool. All right, so this is the uh, animation scene. Uh, if I go ahead and play this back, you can see that we have a character with some animation on it here. You can see the trajectories and everything. Um, and for illustration purposes, I've stripped out everything and made this uh, something that would resemble uh, a scene that an animator would have, a, a rough set uh, with um, things running quickly, stuff that you don't need in the scene isn't there, and all we have is just what the animators need. All right, so let's say we want to get the animation from this character onto the animation in the full layout scene. Um, and as you can see, uh, we've got uh, the character in here, and if I select it, you can see that there are no keyframes down here on the timeline, uh, just the camera moving. Um, and this would be uh, typical of a, uh, a pipeline where you would have this scene being lit and shaded uh, and having the render layers set up and everything while the animators are working in another scene. So. I'm going to get the animation from this guy into the other scene uh, very easily. So if I go to my layers here, I've put all of the controller objects for this uh, character on one layer, and if I go ahead and select them, you can see that we've got a bunch of keyframes here. Let me just get rid of that. And you can see I have all the animation right here. So I can go ahead <coughs> and simply go to Animation, Save Animation. So this is a Save Animation window. Um, Right now, it's set to save animated tracks and include constraints. Now, important note, including constraints isn't going to include new constraints. So if you had, uh, on one of your controllers, done a link constraint to maybe have a character's hand grab something and, uh, or maybe link to the shoulders or the, the hip controller or, or something uh, changing like that, it's not going to bring over anything that didn't already exist. So you'd want to make sure that any of those constraints for swapping hierarchy or changing your parent already exist in your uh, in your rig before you send it out to animation. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this, I'll just call this character 01 
animation. And if I go ahead and save this, all right, there we go. Now we've saved out the animation. I'll just pop over to the other scene. And using my layers here, you can see we've got more layers. Things are different. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select those controllers again. Get rid of this. You can also use selection sets for this. That works pretty nicely. And I'll go to animation, load animation. Now if I go back to that same path, you can see that here we have it. This is our animation file. So I'm going to go ahead and load motion. And here you go. If I play this back, you'll see that the animation has been copied over into my full render scene. And this is undoable. So if I just hit undo, you can see that we, we go back. And if I were to uh, go ahead and you know have this character be somewhere else, um, or you know just offset whatever. Uh, typically, if you just merge in a character uh, or reference it in, uh, you're going to have it at the uh, at the origin. So if I go ahead and do the same thing, I'll select my controllers. I'll do animation, load animation. And here we go. So you can see that it's offset and not in the correct location. The reason for this is that the uh, global controller here, as you can see, has no keyframes on it. It is important to know that you must have a keyframe on your animation for it to copy over. So if I hop over to this scene, select this, you can see the global controller does not have any keyframes on it. If I just go auto key, or just put a key on here, and then go ahead and select my controllers again, animation, save animation, and go ahead and save that out. Coming back to our layout scene, grabbing the controllers, animation, load animation. And here we have it. Now you'll notice that there's already keyframes on here. You can do a couple things. You can replace or insert. Inserting lets you do an offset, but we don't need to worry about that right now, so I will just replace my controllers. This would be useful if you had like an effect scene that was offset by 100 frames to let pre-roll uh, catch up uh, for like cloth sim or particles or something like that. But we don't need to do that, so I'm just going to replace. If I change this to absolute, now it's going to put it in the correct location. And there you go. You can see that it's offset it. Now the reason for this, uh, the reason that the animation looked good on the character before was because all of it was in the coordinate system of this global. Everything in this rig was parented either directly or indirectly up to this global. However, the global exists in world space. So by changing the absolute and relative values, you can offset, or you can have it maintain its offset, or uh, go to the location uh, that it was in its parent file. So, as you can see, this is a pretty simple and easy way to get animation uh, between scenes, and is really, really useful, especially when starting to manage larger workflows. All right, well, that's the, uh, that's the technique of transferring animation between uh, character rigs or scene files. Uh, I hope it was useful. My name's Aaron Davilo, and thanks for watching.